Jam. Assalamualaikum. Asante nisan. I am very delighted to have uh, the morning <coughs> with the uh, members from uh, Northern Kenya region. As Okura said, uh, he called me and asked me if I could uh, have time to come and have a uh, breakfast. And uh, I told him my diary was full, but I will see if I can shift. And I quickly looked at the diary and I, and I shifted. And uh, I'm always pleased to meet people from this region for historical reasons. Um, you've said many things. I'm going to say why later. But uh, um, I just want to, I don't want to take a very long time to talk to you. Because we have discussed so many things. I see so many familiar faces here. And uh, we have been through the issues. Uh, so I don't want to really belabor the points. Um, in my other early incarnation, when I was a Prime Minister, I appointed uh, one of you, who is a very me here, as a minister, the minister of Northern Kenya and other arid and semi arid lands. And in that capacity, he did a lot of work. The number of experts, he did a lot of research work and produced a lot of documents, a lot of problems, but they went around and looked at the problems, the causes, and the solutions to those problems. So we really do not want to reinvent the wheel. You know where you are and where we should take off from and continue. <laughs> this region of, uh, of Kenya has lagged behind for historical reasons. I told you when we were at school, when you were drawing the map of Kenya, you drew it, you drew it, then you took a ruler and drew a straight line from Turkana right down to Lamu. Up there you wrote NFD, Northern Frontier District. There were no towns, nothing there. Kenya was defined by what was below that line. And as I told you, Kenya was defined by the rail line. That is how Kenya was actually constructed. The railway was constructed from Mombasa to Kisumu. It was called Kenya Uganda Railway. You ask yourself, if it was Kenya Uganda, why did it end in Kisumu? Because Kisumu was then part of Uganda, the capital of the eastern province of Uganda which came all the way up to Naibasha. So from Kisumu, they were just sent by ship across to Port Bell in Kampala. Then the railway was again constructed from Moi, a branch, through Taveta to Moshi. Another one from Konza to Magadi, to go and get the, Magadi, the shoulder ash. Another one from Nairobi, to Nanyuki, Mount Kenya. Uh, then from um, Gilgil to Nyahururu. And then Eldoret to Kitari. All that area was called the White Highlands. And that's where the towns sprang up along the river line, with the railway stations. And those are where the economic activities were concentrated. To Amazongo, Northern Kenya was of no economic value. So it was just NFD. Then, when independence came, the reason why this was perpetuated, one of them, was because there was a shift of war. That shift of war gave the government in Nairobi an excuse 
to continue with my generalization of that regime. And um, nothing was happening. Laws were introduced which continue to marginalize that area. It was called Special Operational Zone. Where you were not, you go in there, you needed a special permit to go there. And there you found policemen wearing jungle fatigue and dealing with the people as if they are foreigners, their own country. I'm telling you that he was just truly on his first trip to, to Mandela was shocked when we were kicked out of our routine. And we found ourselves completely helpless, there's nowhere to sleep. The DC had given instructions that we would not be accommodated in any of the hotels. The owners of the hotels were told that if they accommodated us, the hotels would be closed. So we found ourselves sleeping in somewhere under a tree in the compound of a friend of ours. The, the one, our, our friend Mr. Yusuf, he passed on last year. The one who took us to his uh, parents, and because there was only one bedroom available, we allowed the only woman in our delegation to sleep there. As we were sleeping in bed, but just under the tree, being woken up in the morning by Somali BBC. <laughs> That was a, a special operation zone. They were told that what we had done elsewhere, we could not do there. This is 1992. And uh, so, this is what really explains the reason why this region has been, I mean, they have continued to neglect it. Then came the session of paper number, number 10. That basically, gave it an intellectual basis that you invest more in high yielding areas and the low areas, marginalized areas, will benefit from the trickle down effect of that development. At how Makomu ya kutuku bae kukwa meza ita tirika ukushini na wataonja iyo. So that is really the reason why the area has remained backwards. So we know issues of education, issues of infrastructure, issues of livestock, water, health, security are really pertinent issues that we need to deal with in this region. This is this region. You say that um, you know that the education system is, is basically hurting because of insecurity in the area. That's why we said that uh, we we'll do an affirmative action. And that in terms of admission of students from this region to teacher training colleges and universities, and how them go back and teach in these areas, where children do not suffer in, in terms of education. And then you also need to put up modern, low-cost boarding schools in this region also. Okay? Um, and then livestock. I'm saying that people with livestock do not need to be poor people. For a long time, Botswana was running an economy purely based on livestock. They did not you know before they discovered diamonds and so on in Botswana. It was running one of the most successful economies on the continent. And you know the Botswanans came to Kenya to learn from Kenya in 1968. We were taken to KMC, Nagriva. They went and looked at it. Then they went to Botswana 
a center for the called BMC, Botswana Meat Corporation, a town called Lubatsi. I have been there. <coughs> By the time I went there, there was slaughtering three times as many animals there than compared to KMC at that time. Exporting to South Africa, exporting to Europe, to Britain, to the United States, and so on from Botswana. So they were running a very, very efficient economy in Botswana. But what happened to us here? Instead of us doing better, we went down until eventually the president has to take MC and give it to the military to run. Instead of putting up another one, you know that Kenya near the source, this one which was here was limping. The military which has been given to the society. So we, 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 that is a, a, a very, very strategic part of our economy, which we can transform and make it a real foreign exchange honor for this country. Uh, issues of water. I remember at that time we did boreholes. At that time we started doing dams. I'm saying in this region where it rains, it rains heavily, causing flooding. That water is all washed into the rivers, and the rivers take it, export it to the ocean. The ocean does not need water, because enough water. We need water on the solid land here. So we harvest that water and use it in the times of drought. And we get food stock, feed stock for our animals. So that in times of drought, they continue to have what uh, feed stock. All this is possible and we can do. And then the issues of, uh, of health, first education. I'm saying that. We need to start there in terms of our transformation of our country. I say that this country has had two liberations. The first liberation brought independence. The second liberation brought us a new constitution, which as you see has now opened up Northern Kenya. The third liberation and the last one is for economic liberation of our country. And we start with uh, education. But we need to give each and every child on in our country, irrespective of the socio-economic status of the parents, equal opportunity from nursery, primary, secondary, tertiary, up to university level. And once they finish, then be given an opportunity for employment and meaningful employment commensurate with their qualifications, not giving them wheelbarrows. <laughs> and those who want to do business have access to capital. So you create a fund through which they can borrow and they don't have to pay any interest or anything until after seven years. The issue of infrastructure, this is you. This region was completely neglected. When I became Minister for Roads, it became an eye opener because I decided to travel around the country. One time, a group of the demonstrators marched from Moyale. It took them over five days to Nairobi on foot. They announced they were coming to walk to Nairobi. Then they came to my the buildings and there, minutes and works. I was told that it's a team of 
some rascal from come into the building. They say they want to see you. And they say they have come from Moyadi. We want to call the police to remove them. I tell them why? Because they have no appointment. I said, no, 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 no. Put them in a boardroom. I'm coming to, to talk to them. So I went to talk to them. Then they explained to me the, 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 the problem with the PLT. How long it takes to move from here to there to Miami. The kind of prices they were paying for commodities, nearly three times the, the prices here in Nairobi, because of lack of, of local power infrastructure and the insecurity in the region. So I told him, I want to show you we will build the roads. And then I ordered the farmer secretary to ensure that they were paid money, good money for the accommodation and their meals and also their transport back to Moyale. Then I booked an appointment with President Kibaki. I told him I want to come and see him alone with his peers in Daora. I go with my peers, it was then called Mr. Um, Ongera. So when I went, I went to the state house. I explained to him the story I told you about how Kenya was developed from colonial days up to now, how there was a neglect of the northern part. So I told him, Mr. President, I want you to go down in history as a president and I was charged. Kenya was expanded eastwards. Then he looked at me and said, Situfani. <laughs> I looked to him, you know what you can do? I had been to Addis Ababa and I met with my counterpart who was Minister for Roads. And they told me the problems they were having after Eritrea had separated and closed the ports of Asab and Masawa. They were not able to export properly, so they had to now go to Djibouti to bring imports to Addis Ababa. But they said that Kenya, Mombasa, is shorter than Djibouti to southern Ethiopia. So, uh, I told the president, you can build a road from Kibwezi through Kitui, Mingi, uh, uh, Mahua, Isiolo, Marsalut, to Moyali. I said, what to find? I said, I wanted your permission so that I can start negotiations. So I started negotiations with the ADB, the World Bank, and then my engineers had designed the Moyali Beach from Moyali, through Archer's Post, Marsabit, to, uh, sorry, from uh, Isiolo, I just posted most of it to Miami. That's how we started. <laughs> Later on, when I was a Prime Minister, we came up with the lab set. Now, lab set, now you improve the things. Then we now put up a new port in Nam, and we put up a highway coming along. And the railway line coming from Lamu through Isiolo, with Isiolo branches, one to Addis Ababa, another one through Lodwa, Juba. And now, as the high representative of the African Union on infrastructure, I have put it as an AU project, and I am now expanding it from Juba through Bangi in the Central African Republic up to Kripi in Cameroon. To create a land bridge linking the Atlantic Ocean to the Indian Ocean and opening up the interior of the continent. We have to make this a very, very important corridor. Lamu, Isiolo, Isiolo, Moyade, then Isiolo, uh, Norwa, to Duba. And that will make it a very, 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 very busy area 
there will be a highway and there will also be a railway line. And then we will talk about bringing the oil from South Sudan, the pipeline, to connect with Lord with Tokana, into Siono, up to Lam. And if the refinery is Siono, then you have now a refined product line going from Siono to Addis Ababa. And the one supplying the, the interior in the country here. Yeah. So Siono becomes a very strategic town. And then you now do the highway, which somebody asked here. Isiolo, Modogashi, uh, uh, Wajia, to Mandera. And then you do Mandera to Mayali. You open up that area. Yeah. So you have opened up that area completely in terms of infrastructure. So I'm saying that there's need, of the, there is a way of dealing with these issues. In terms of health, I talked the other day about Baba Kea. Baba Kea means that we give each and every Kenyan who is sick opportunity for treatment. <laughs> and we want to have a level four hospitals in each and every sub county. So that when we put these hospitals, you have doctors, you have nurses, and you have also got medicine. Those and each and every Kenyan is covered through a medical health insurance scheme. <laughs> then we talked about value addition to, to our goods which are produced, putting up processing industries. And you have centers, Garissa, you have Majia, you have Isiolo, you have Arsabit, you have Madeira, those can be growth centers. If that is there, those will keep people there. They don't have to come all the way to Nairobi looking for jobs. Okay? Then I've talked about the issue of dealing with the poor or the poor. In the rural areas, we have got the rural poor. When, for example, right now, the current situation, when rains have disappeared and there's drought, the livestock is dying. Livestock is dying and the, the basis of the economy there is livestock. So children will starve. People sometimes live without food. And this is unacceptable under the new constitution. That's why we say we are going to introduce a social protection program I know a number of people who live in Europe. If you go in Britain, there's what they call the dole. If you are employed, you have been sacked from your job, and you have not uh, got a new job, you just go and register for the dole. So that you can be able to pay your rent and get something to eat. That exists in other parts of Europe, in the United States, in Brazil, even in Egypt, here, in Algeria, in Namibia, they have a social protection program. So what I'm talking about is not rocket science. It's not fictitious. So I'm saying they're going to introduce a social protection program. A family without anyone with the source of income a month will be entitled to a social protection fund of 6,000 shillings per month from the government. Okay? They say, oh, the Baba is lying. I say, no. I know where the money is. I've been the Prime Minister of this country. <laughs> Last now about Azimio. Because we talked to the court about opium, and I said this is a good idea to bring the people together. That's what has been so, so about. We talked to the president at 
length before we did the handshake. Before we did the handshake, because the country was going to be divided. The people, my people told me, after the, the Supreme Court ruling, and uh, Uhuru Park and Kasarani swearing in, they said, Sasa, to chukwe wa picha yote ya Uhuru, to rondeke mahali, to chome, and to answer to the tawala wenyeo, to toss your shuru, to the national vietu. Yuni kawana, to kishifata njia hiyo, na peleka Kenya, Somalia. Because very easy to start, but to finish it, it's not easy. You guys border Somali, and you know where Somali is today. And it's going to continue that for a long time. Look at Afghanistan, look at Libya now, and so on. So it is very easy to take Kenya to that route. So I said, no, that is not the route to go. Then the others went to Uhuru and told him Raila has committed treason. Let us arrest him, charge him, take him to committee, and hang him. Mama Ibishi. Uhuru was saying, no, it's going to hit you. Mama is going to come So it's under those circumstances that we met to talk. And we talked for a very long time. First time he took for 13 hours for the reason. Okay? Then we adjourned. Then we went again and talked for another six hours. Then we said, so Kenya is divided. Kenya is so divided, it's a lot of discrimination, ethnicity. People don't trust each other. You look at here, this is a Somalia. This one is a Korana. This one here is a Gabra. This one here is a Sequin. Orba. And then you go in there. Oh, you will hear this one here is a um, uh, uh, Degodia. This one here is a. Uh, uh, and then he, um, uh, Gary, Ogaden, <laughs> and so on and so forth. And then if you go within the Ogaden, you go down to some clams, <laughs> and so on. This is the thing that, see, people distrust with each other. You give somebody a job you think you've done a good thing, you have to, oh, put it with me. When I was uh, the chairman of the Parliamentary Select Committee on Katiba, when we appointed uh, that young man as a chairman, uh, no, no, the, the one who became the chairman of IPC, exactly. I brought him to the, to the commission. The two members fought. Atikina Mara ni Ogadentu. But she can have a piano room, one was a guy from Mandela. They fought this one in, uh, in, in front of me at the Munga there. At he is Kali Yanyama ni Mandela to Ogadentu. Ogadentu then sing in a tune. So we have those kind of issues in our country. And we must find a way of dealing with them uh, so that we educate a society that unifies all of us. And we have a fairness in terms of allocation of resources. See, people are all fighting about public public service jobs. As you took an appointment to a board, to a permanent secretary, number of directors, and so on. But public service only employs a fraction of our people. If you take all the people in government up and uh, county government and the armed forces, 
police and so on. Total 700,000. 700,000. And all those positions are occupied. The vacancies only come through attrition, uh, death, and retirement. That is only 10%. So only 70,000 jobs are available in public service every year. But every year, we put in the labor market one million new people looking for jobs. Yeah. Those who live primary, secondary, tertiary, and university. One million against only 70,000. Answer is what? Private sector. We must enable our private sector to grow, to be able to absorb so many of our people who are looking for jobs. And also promote in private investment. The only solution that we want to, to, to do. But now we want to work together and agree. Ethiopia will come. See, we have ODM and Jubilee. But we say we are bringing out other parties. Once the bill goes through Parliament, we will register it. We will be able to bring parties and even individuals can come and run directly as a meal. You can come as OPIA as a meal, ODM as a meal, Jubilee as a meal. So I've been telling people, let us bring a united opinion. Because, you know, in the elective season, there are a lot of interests. You find there are 10 candidates for MCA, 10 candidates for MP, the same for senator, women rep, governor. But ultimately, only one person will be elected as an MCA in the award. The same in a, in a constituency. The same with one woman rep, senator, and, and governor. That does not mean that the one who have not been elected are useless. No. Or there is no opportunity. There will be an opportunity for everybody. We, we, have, we must have a win-win a a win situation. So if you are not elected as an MP, some them with some of the jobs for you. If you're not senator, women rep, or governor, there will be a position for you going forward. But let us remain in the movement together. <laughs> Don't run away and now go elsewhere. <laughs> you want to create an accommodating society which brings everybody together. You see, my, one of my closest uh, colleagues around is Junet Mohammed. Junet's origin is Mandela. They are known as the Kona tribe. You know what I mean by Kona tribe? <laughs> that is his uh, brother-in-law. Okay? But now, Junet is a member of parliament of Suna East. Gori County. See? And in the last parliament, Gori County has got eight members of parliament. All the seven members of parliament were removed. Only United survived. <laughs> the only one was re-elected. The rest were all removed and killed. Why? Because of the People like him because of what he's doing to them. And it's not because of his ethnicity. The voters there, there are how many Somali voters? They are hardly 100. But the United States is elected because he's a Kenyan. And that is what we want to see. You don't want somebody coming and calling other people for the door. Look at Nairobi here. You see? He is a member of parliament for uh, Kabukundi. Okay? Why? Because he's a Kenyan. I have been a member of parliament for Langata for 20 years. 
Okay? But you, you talk about the origin or, or the, 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 you know, the indigenous residents of, of, of here. The Rome is a Maasai land. But there's not a single Maasai MP now in Nairobi. Because it's the capital of Kenya, any Kenyan can come and run in Nairobi and be elected. So if nobody should call somebody but our door in their country. Kenyans should be proud that they in their country live together as one people. You can go to Garissa and live and work there on Madeira. And we must make this our country safe. That's why the issue of security is very important in Northern Kenya. And it's an issue that we want to deal with squarely. So that our people feel secure in their land. Insecurity in Somalia should not be allowed to permanently spill over into our, 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 our country. Protect our people against insecurity in our neighboring countries. This is also something that we intend to do and work together to make this region fully integrated into the part of bigger Kenya become one country. This is what I'm determined to do. And work it. So we will our manifesto is almost ready. We'll give it to you the sections that affect your areas so that you can have an input into it. But we will keep it secret until the strategic time. We don't want other people to plagiarize it. The other people are talking about bottoms up. <laughs> bottoms up is basically just a slogan. It is not an economic theory. It has no economic basis at all. Yeah, yeah it was called uh, the. Um, it's called uh, this focus for uh, rural development. That's what it was called. It was called this focus is uh, bottom up, bottom up approach. Okay. I thank you for listening to me. Azimio, 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 Azimio,